Good morning. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you for joining us for another study from God's Word. This coming Sunday morning here at the 25th Street Church of Christ in Columbus, I'm going to be preaching a lesson about unity. And we're going to be looking at a passage in Ephesians, and it's in Ephesians 4, as it talks about one Lord, one faith, one body, one baptism. We're going, to be, we're going to be looking at that passage to, to better understand unity and to understand unity for as the Lord defines it. Well, w- within that study, I, I wanted to share an element of that, of that sermon with you this morning. I, I want you to think about baptism. Right? The passage says one baptism. As we're endeavoring to keep the, the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, One of the things to think about is one baptism. And I I want you to think about baptism. And we're simply, I want you to simply think about what the Lord said in Mark chapter 16. And I want you to think about what is commonly, what is commonly taught. But let's look over there in, in Mark chapter 16. And let's just read verse 15 and 16. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Let's start with this. If your takeaway from Mark 16, verse 16, if your takeaway from that is obviously that means you don't have to be baptized to be saved, you're missing you're missing the point. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe, obviously they're not going to be baptized. They don't even believe. Obviously, they are condemned. But the Lord's, the Lord's instructions are pretty clear. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Um, just a few words, but I want you to think about how the religious world has made an absolute hash of that passage. And, and as the denominational world, and you might think about denomination means division, and if your definition of unity is division, you don't understand scriptural unity. You need to go back and read scripture. But, but think about what the Lord said and think about what is commonly taught. And we're going to look at a few different, a few different religious groups. And this is not meant as a slight against them personally, but this is their doctrine. So I want you to think about it. Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. That's what Jesus said. But what Catholicism actually teaches is that he who does not believe and is baptized will be saved. And if you don't understand that, what I'm referring to is infant baptism. That you have babies who in no way believe, are in no way repentant, and yet they are sprinkled, they are in their idea baptized for the remission of their sins. Are they doing what Jesus said to do? Are they obeying what Jesus said, what Jesus commanded? Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Those babies don't believe, judging by the screaming and the kicking and the carrying on. They don't believe. They're being baptized against their will. And, but but yet this is what Catholicism has taught for many, many years Rather than simply accepting what Jesus says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, they say he who does not believe and is baptized will be saved. You might think about it. What what Protestantism teaches is he who believes will be saved, then he is baptized. If you've ever studied with anyone who belongs to a Protestant denomination, they believe that all you have to do is believe and you will be saved. Then, at some point later on, you're baptized to show that you've already been saved. That is not what Jesus said. My question for that situation is, what happens if you're never baptized? If baptism is just to show that you've been saved, then it seems like baptism is just a show. Is that all baptism is? Is it just a show? Not according to Scripture, according to what Jesus said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. As many as have been baptized have put on Christ. You might think about all those passages. 
That was Acts 2, 38. That was Galatians 3, 27. 1 Peter 3, there is now... There is now a likeness which now saves us, namely baptism. You might consider it. Protestantism says, nope, you don't have to be baptized. Just believe, and you'll be safe. That's not what Jesus said. Pentecostalism actually teaches he who believes and is baptized, and then baptized again, is saved. And what I'm referring to with that is they believe that, as I understand their teaching, you are baptized in water. They do believe in, in immersion. But then later on, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit, and that's when you speak in tongues. And if I understand it correctly, they think it's at that point that you're really saved. Um, you might consider it. The, the Lord simply says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. You might think about that idea. You have Mormonism and actually teaches, and, and some of these I meant to be somewhat somewhat humorous, but at the same time they're they're sad when you really think about it. But Mormonism, in effect, teaches he who did not believe and was not baptized can be saved if someone is baptized for him. What I'm referring to there is that the Mormon the the Mormon denomination teaches that if you have a relative who never obeyed their idea of the gospel. Um, and if they have passed away, you can actually be baptized for them. Even though they didn't believe and they were not baptized, you can actually obey for them. You might consider it. Rather than simply accepting what Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. They've, they're looking for another loophole. You have the universalist. The universalist says... He who does not believe and is not baptized is saved. They believe that everybody's saved. Doesn't matter if you believe, doesn't matter if you're baptized, doesn't matter. Everybody's saved. That's not what Jesus said. Okay? Uh, another one, as you think about it, and this one, and pardon me for being perhaps a little too humorous here, but Jehovah's Witnesses actually believe that he who believes and is baptized is still not saved. Because they actually believe there's only 144,000 people who are saved. And all those seats are already filled. That's why they believe when you die that you just out of existence. That you're just gone. No hope of salvation, really. So they really don't believe what the Lord said. What it all goes to, and, and my point with all this is, it's a pretty simple verse, isn't it? as we think about true unity, and we looked at that passage in Mark 16, what Jesus said is actually very simple. Very often people will say, well, yeah, but we all read out of the same Bible. Well, we may all read out of the same Bible, but apparently we, we can't all be obeying the same commandment because everyone's doing different things. And what we've seen is a lot of people are teaching something different than Jesus taught. So when we ask the question, which it's Friday, and we, we deal with questions that people have on Fridays, when we deal with the question such as, does it matter what we believe? Does it matter what we teach? Does it matter what a church teaches? We might as well ask the question, did it matter what Jesus taught? If we want to follow the Lord, then we need to follow the Lord. And we need to obey his commandment and not the commandments of men. You might consider it, but I, I appreciate you studying along with me today. Um, as, we've, as we have thought just a little bit about baptism, if you're able to, hope you join us for the sermon Sunday morning as we think more about unity. It, it'll be posted on Facebook and YouTube, such things as that, if you're not able to catch it in person. But we're going to be thinking about unity and, and the scriptural idea of unity and how it happens. So I hope you're able to join us for that. But I appreciate you joining us for just this little bit of daily bread this morning. Hope you have a good day. Hope you have a good weekend as well. Hope you have a good Lord's Day too. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you Monday morning.